Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Tension JK. How you guys doing? All good? I'm glad. Um, yesterday, I had kind of a spiritual moment, right? Something kind of deep, something very nice, and I just wanted to share that with you guys, maybe to encourage you guys a little bit. Um, a while back, and I made my my last video, and I was just kind of so exhausted with life, just. Everything seemed just so tiring and burdensome and just so worrisome and all these kind of things. And there's definitely a liberation from that, a freedom from that. And I think a um, solution is very, very quite simple. It's, it's just to do and obey what God tells you to do. But that's, that's the hard part, honestly. It's like, how do you even go about doing something like that? Um, yesterday, I, I realized one thing that I really did not have in my life um, I guess I kept that on the back burner everything in the world is stopping me from doing what God tells me to do which is to win souls to preach the gospel to them and reach out to them I mean who else is not I mean who else is gonna reach out to these people I mean <laughs> if, if everybody thinks that hey the other guy's gonna do it or the other guy's gonna do it, then nobody will do it you know, that's one of my attitudes. It's just like, you know, I'm not a missionary. I'm not a pastor. I'm. I don't have. I don't need this responsibility in my life. Like that's how I felt for the really longest time. I just want to do my Christian duty, right? Just be nice. Just go to church, and pray and read the Bible, and that's it. I don't want to do anything else. Like I don't want to be involved. I don't like that awkward situation. And so that was my life. But with that comes vanity. It really does. You start to feel empty and you feel just bored to be a Christian in a way. You know, I guess that's an easy way to put it. You, you're so bored as a Christian. You can't do what the world does, right? You can't go party anymore. You can't smoke. You can't do nothing. Then what's the taste? What's the, what's the delight? What's the peace? What's the enjoyment of being a Christian? there's got to be something else there's a reason why God called us and he says this is the bomb that if you become a Christian there's gonna be persecution but but there's gonna be amazing things and it's just like a lot of Christians don't get to taste what that amazing thing is they think going to church and doing worship songs and that's how that's the most amazing it gets but it's not when you win somebody to Christ when you see a sinner repent and turn towards Christ there's nothing better and to and and better yet if you see that person and that person turns into a disciple of Christ and he and they grow and they mature in Christ and then you get to have fellowship with them and you test them and you edify them that there's not there's nothing greater that's like the fruit you know what I mean I think um, a really wise man once told me that reading the scriptures or Christianity is like a fruit right a lot of people, they just eat the exterior part of it and think that's Christianity, right? Imagine eating a pineapple, just eating the shell of a pineapple. It's going to taste nasty. But then if you dig deep and then you taste that core and it's delicious, it's sweet and tangy and sour and all of that, that's kind of like the Christian life, I think. Like, um, a lot of folks are just stuck in the exterior, the religious act of everything. You know, and I'm not blaming them because I, I, was, I was exactly the same way. It's so easy to get stuck in this habitual act of religiosity right but then I really want to encourage you guys to taste what's really deep within right is that after church what do you do after church you know you got to grow and mature in Christ after church your life has to be revolved around Jesus right not just in church or whatever you do but every day like every day it's like an everyday thing you walk and talk and you fellowship with God you grow in God you you deny yourself and you let God take over your life you, you fight readily against sin right and that means that means throwing away the movies and media and TVs and and your favorite pop idol stars and all this kind of stuff that once used to be your idol you, you have to readily like shun those things and I don't think a lot of people are ready for that but they better be I mean because there's a, there's a spiritual war going on I, I heard this thing on now not a while back about spiritual warfare and I'm sure a lot of you Christian people out there probably know what spiritual warfare is because you guys heard it a million times but a lot of you guys don't believe it and you guys don't believe that it's really really true that demons exist right devils are playing tricks on you and that 
there is a war going on. What I've heard and on what I come to really believe in my heart is that there is spiritual warfare. And it happens in your mind. Your mind is like the battlefield. That's where all the bombs go off and attacks go off and so on. And the enemy truly is, well, sin, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him. But bills above, whatever, right? They can't possess you if you are a Christian. It doesn't mean they go into you and make you move. However, if you invite them, if you invite them into your life, they will come and they will possess you. And, they, and people talk and they testify of, you know, devil possession. And I've, te I've talked to so many people who tell me about their testimony, about how their room started shaking and things started to levitate. And, and this one guy yesterday, he told me that like his, his grandmother used to have like a voodoo doll. And used to have like a, you know, the doll and used to like pick pins in the stomach. And every day, like the person that she, you know, voodoo dolled, like her stomach would hurt all the time. And, and right before she was about to die, they took a camera and, you know, was trying to film her last words or something like this. But every time she, she was trying to do that, the camera was shut off. And there was mysterious things that would happen. And so I'm not trying to scare you. Or maybe I am trying to scare you, but there, there definitely is demonic presence in this world. It truly is. But it isn't something that we need to be so afraid of as Christian people because Christ and God is stronger than that. But it is to be a fool to think that they don't manipulate your life, that they don't control your life in some way, or shape, or form. They do. They attack your mind. You know those whispers that always whisper to you? Because... Some whispers are from your flesh, no doubt, right? Your flesh will tell you things like, Hey, man, don't you want to drink something? You know? Hey, man, don't you want to do this or do that? Hey, that girl's really pretty, blah, 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 blah. You know, there's there's fleshly desires that, that give you that thought and whatever. But there's also that other hidden, hidden voice, those whispers that you can't really pinpoint. Why would you say that to yourself? You're so ugly. You're a slut. You're, you're this. You're that. You're that. And oh, you can't make it. You're, you're a failure look at what you're doing and then they bring anxiety they bring doubt depression and these ugly things that you're just like shut up right and people are so tired and exhausted battling this this thing people don't say i'm fighting my demons for no reason it's there's there's truth in that the scriptures always talk about demons there was a man who had a possession of demons like a thousand strong they call themselves legion right and Jesus took the demons and put them into pigs and the pigs fell off the cliff and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you guys heard that story. My point is, there is a spiritual war going on in your mind. And whatever you put into your mind, it will become you. It will become part of your character. The things that you watch. I mean, people that watch like scary movies all the time and then they tell me that they enjoy that stuff. And they, they're, they happily watch gore and just watching nasty stuff like that. And I... I and I, I can't look at them the same. Like, are you serious? Like, you're sitting down here watching your human bodies being ripped to shreds and monsters eating stuff apart. And, I mean, there's a limit to that. Something definitely is going on in your brain that is allowing you to feel comfortable with something like that. It's, it, I don't know, I feel very, you know, weary about people like that. So, you need to put on the whole armor of God, Right? First of all, you need to have the shield of faith. Okay, Now, the shield of faith, from what I've heard, is that the, it's the fact that you believe first. You need to believe. You need to have faith that this stuff is true. Because without that first initial step, I mean, it's nothing's going to work. Nothing else going to work. When you pray to God, you need to believe that He is answering you and listening to you if you don't even believe god is real and you're like i don't know if you're real but can you answer my prayers no that you need faith god says you need to have faith and so that's the same thing with spiritual warfare first thing is faith the shield of faith to say you know what i know that there's demons pr presence but i know that god is sovereign and that god is powerful and that demons are not but i know that demons while they can't possess me they can you know, manipulate my ways, make me make me think certain things over and over and over and over again until you believe it. You know, the power of suggestion is a scary thing. Propaganda. If you just look at 
the way the world manipulates people is exactly the way Satan does it, but more of in a spiritual way. You know what I mean? Like, think about propaganda and commercials. You know what I mean? Like, I watch, like, because of YouTube, you know, every now and again, you see the same things over and over and over again. I made it a mission. I made it a mission not to buy any product that I see on YouTube just because just of the rebellion nature of it all. But I noticed that when I go out to the grocery store or something like this, immediately I remember the first thing I saw in the commercial. Like I had some allergies. I had some allergy issues. And guess what the first thing I thought of? Claritin. Why? Because I hear it all the time. Every time when Claritin, blah, 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 blah. Or when I get eye drops, I think of that really funny guy. Like, clear eyes, blah, 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 blah. You know that dude? And then I, I think of that first. Or when I try to buy this or that. I mean, they have methods to brainwash us, in a way. Suggestions. You know, They're not forcing us to buy it, right? That's, that's the crazy thing about it. They're not telling us, hey, you got to buy this, you got to buy this. No, but they keep telling you over and over and over and over again. And that's how Satan works in your life. I tell you over, you're not beautiful. You're not beautiful. Don't ever think you're beautiful. You're not worth it. You're ugly. You know? You're a slut. It doesn't matter what anybody says. You, you, you're a whore. You're this, you're that, you're that. And they'll keep telling you over and, and you'll be like, no, it's not. I'm not like that. But then, yes, you are. It's like, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. And you're battling this every single day. And then not, not only that, you have to face with racism, right? And all you get all these racist thoughts in your head too, or things that are done to you, right? Oh, it's because I'm this. Oh, because I'm I'm colored. I get mistreated because of this. And you just keep blaming, blaming, and blaming, and blaming, and blaming. Eventually, your whole mind is just like a, a war field, right? And you, you don't know who's who. You don't know if that's your thought or if that's, you know, the flesh. Or you don't even know if that's from God. You don't know if that's from Satan. You're just like, ah, oh, shut up. And you wonder why so many people turn to alcohol to just kind of shut everything off or do some drugs to shut everything off or do some antidepressant stuff. You know what I mean? And, and in the end, you're, you're like a shell of your former self. You ever look back at your life? I do that sometimes. And you look back at your like innocent life when you used to play with Nerf guns and just having the blast, right? How innocent you used to be. How all you needed was a rollerblades and go out with your friends and like a little line and you would have the best time ever. But now you're in high school or you're in college or what have you and all you could think about is that is that person talking crap about me? Now, am I dressed well? Is is this is this hip enough? Am I cool enough? Am I in this group enough? You know what I mean? You got all this stupid things you gotta worry about on a daily basis. All of this stuff is just weighing on top of you, on top of your spirit. Another thing I notice is that a lot of people concern they're so concerned about their their image and just all the stuff that makes them healthy, but they do not take a moment to think about their eternal life, right? So bring it back, I was feeling really, 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 really empty for a really long time. I felt so empty. One of the things, one of the many reasons was because I wasn't doing what God told me to do, which was to obey His words. And another thing is, as a Christian, you ought to do a mission or ought to do His purpose. What is His purpose for making you Christian? It's so that you can go and preach the gospel. As simple as that. Love others, preach the gospel, bring them into the kingdom. That's, that's the simple mission. If you love me, feed my sheep. Right? He told Peter that. And so with that, like... People, people go, okay, I love you, Christ, I love you, but they don't do nothing for Him. They only do something for themselves, for their own spiritual growth. But when was the last time you actually broke that awkward barrier, right? Because it's so awkward to talk to people, right? People that you don't know, it's so awkward to just kind of, hey, you ever heard of uh, Jesus? <laughs> Let somebody, like, you know, persecute you or make fun of you, and, or you don't even know what to say to defend yourself, Right? It's embarrassing, right? But when was the last time you've ever done that? Better yet, when was the last time you said it and it worked and you brought somebody into Christ? If you haven't tasted that, right? If you haven't tasted that, you, you'll be wondering uh, for a really long time why Christian life is so boring. That is where the joy is. And I haven't done that stuff in a while. 
I figured uh, YouTube, I could just say my word, you know, say my words, make videos, and then boom, I'm done, man, you know, message people every now and again, and that's, that's, you know, putting my time card in as a Christian, I felt good like that, but God started to show me in my life that that's not enough, that's, that's not enough, while it is nice that I get to do that, it's not enough, and so, I repented my life, right? I repented towards the God because it was like I was like dragged. I was like, all right, I can't do this anymore. I'm tired of living in darkness. I'm so tired of living under the world's influence as a Christian person. Maybe if I was not a Christian person, I would be enjoying and thriving and loving life. But everywhere I go that is filled with the world, I am sickened by it. I'm disgusted by sin. I feel like Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, just on the outside of Sodom, just looking in and just going, why am I living here? Why can't I be with my, my, my cousin or my uh, uncle Abraham where he's with God all the time? I want to live over there. I kind of felt like that. But then when I, when I fell into my lowest, just the saddest point in my life, just kind of sorrowful again, away from God's words I couldn't take it and I, I repented again I turned away I was like alright every sin that just kinda in my life I'm just shunning them and it was it was amazing right and then yesterday I go to a little art art school and I met this guy I've been seeing him for a while he's just very you know happy dude right he's always preppy and just kinda hey what's up he always acknowledges you and and, and I always love those kind of people. You know, don't you love those kind of people? You got to always bless people like that. Because so many people nowadays, are just they just keep their mouth shut and they just kind of, you know, just do their own thing. Just, they don't even recognize you. They don't even laugh at you or laugh at your jokes. Or they just kind of, you know, by themselves. It's just their own bubble. I don't like people like that, you know. But this person, no matter who it is, doesn't matter if you're cool or uncool. He's just always like, hey, you know, always acknowledging that you're there. It was, it was nice of him. So I had this good vibe about him, you know, he had a good spirit about him, and he, he just kind of made me happy inside, right? And then one day, the spirit of God started to tell, you know, talk to me in that kind of way where it's like, you know, speak to him. Either befriend him, you know, preach the gospel to him, or what have you, just speak to him. I never could have the opportunity to do it, but yesterday, for some reason, I was so hungry, so before I went to class, I bought myself some pretzel with peanut butter inside I actually have some here still <laughs> and I mean I kind of have a hypoglycemia or whatever like very low blood sugar so I need something like that and so during art class I, I just I felt a little stressed out so I went out and I started snacking it was delicious and I was enjoying it and then on the same time he was coming back from his little restroom break I guess and then you know we started talking on the stairway you want some pretzels <laughs> he said yeah sure and so we started eating pretzels and we we're just talking about life started out like a normal conversation started talking about you know just games that i used to play he used to play he likes anime i like i, I watch some anime and talk about movies or what have you and so just you know just worldly normal things right and then all of a sudden i don't know where it might just say like, hey so what do you think about this end of the world stuff I don't know, out of the blue. And he's just like, huh, what's going on? And then we started talking about the spiritual things. And he started to testify about all the scary things that he's ever experienced in his life. With the voodoo, with, with like ghosts and all of that. And it was very all interesting. But as we started getting into it, it started to lead more into things of religion, things of faith, things of the gospel and so on. And in my heart, I was just like, Lord, help me. Lord, keep me on this track. Let me not, you know blow this up or just whatever and I was like Father God help me and it started to lead and it started to lead and then he's like hey you want to sit on that bench and we talk some more and then we started to talk some more and so I started talking about hell and heaven and righteousness and spiritual life and who God is you know God is good and righteous and just and doesn't he have to judge you righteously and aren't you a sinner like me and as a sinner don't you deserve to go to hell you know, I mean, if everybody saw what you did in your life, then wouldn't you deserve hell? And, it, you know, it's like, yeah, of course. And so if, uh, if God is good and he is righteous, shouldn't he judge you righteously and send you to that hell? Regardless of him being a God of love and friendly friendship and, and, and 
goodness and what have you. And shouldn't he send someone like that to hell? It was like a definite yes. So I kept, kept preaching and kept preaching. And God would just flow his words out of me. I felt chilled, just like, what's going on here? And afterwards, as we were leaving, you know, there was back and forth. And, and at the end, we ended up praying, and he's coming to church with me next Sunday, God willing, you know. And I felt so liberated in my heart. Just, this is what God wants us to do. Like, God wants us to reach his people. He sends us to random places in our life, not just for us to be there, just to thrive. But there is some precious soul that God wants to reach. And you don't know who that is. You don't know who it is. But there is this perfect person for everybody. And they might not be perfect. Some people might be very lacking. But then through their lacking, somehow the other person gets saved. Right? And think about how you got saved in your life and how I got saved in my life. It was just some other person. It was another person. It wasn't some spiritual entity that came to me and gave me salvation. It was some other person. So you can be that other person for somebody else. And you better hurry up because this world is getting mighty, mighty dangerous. You guys heard about that story of, uh, I think it was in Oregon, where this guy found Christian people, lined them up, like 10 of them. Lined them up with a gun in the head and it says, are you Christian? And if they said you are a Christian, he went bang and bang and bang. He shot 10 of them. First of all, I mean, I mean, I wish, I wish in that situation I would be able to say that. You know, it, it's, it's hard to say something like that. I want to I be that person that does not bow down to the idol. And even with a gun in my head and I say, yeah, I am Christian. Boom. Go to my father a little earlier, right? But I know that it's easier said than done, but I trust that God will give me courage in those, in those times. And same with you, right? And, I mean, you see stuff like this happen, and you're just like, what is going on? Why is this going on? You don't, you don't see this happening towards any other religion, but the Christian folks. We're preaching love and unity and gospel, and yet we get shot for it, right? And there's random people representing us, which is crazy. I hate that. I hate that. I hate, I hate how in the media that there are, you know, silly, whack Asian people representing Asian people. And I hate that even when it comes to black women and black people in general, that they get represented by horrible representatives. Same with the Mexican people. They get represented in the most grotesque, just belittling way, right? And it's the same way in Christian life. You have Westboro Baptist Church who just put up picket signs. That goes completely against what we believe in. You know, While there are some truths to it, some truth to it, it's mostly surrounded with hate, and bigotry, and lies. You know? But then the whole world are so ignorant to that that they think that when they see the Westboro Baptist Church, they think of just everyday Christians, that we all think that way. It's stereotype. It's laziness. It's just ignorance. And I'm so sick of it. It makes me so it makes me so mad. It boils me. But that is the life that we're living in. And you don't and you think that it's gonna get better than this? It's not. This new generation, this new coming generation, right? The people the kids now, the teenagers, like 11, 12, 13, these dudes know more than when we knew. When I was in the nineties, like when nineteen nineties I didn't know that half the stuff they know. All the disgusting things. They're already getting babies. They're already getting, you know, they're dating already. They're already having sex right now. At like 11, 12. That's unheard of when I was in the 90s. Like when I was 13, man, we were like still watching Baywatch or something. And that was just like, <gasps> you get what I'm saying? But now they have access to free pornography and they just watch that stuff every day. And they think that's love. They think that's power. And that's... That's what represents, uh, that's what being a man is about. Pornography. That's what being a man is about. And that is, that's our future. That's the kids that's coming up. And I know that the people that were before us probably thought we were the devils, right? All oh, those kids in the 90s or the millennials, or those are the bad people. But, yo, it's getting to that point where there's got to be a line somewhere, right? I mean, definitely we kids at the 90s and 2000s, whatever, we did cross a line. We, we 
you know, with this whole yoga pants craze and, and weird fashions and the things that we did with the Kardashians and all this disgusting media, right, with Honey Boo Boo. I'm like, come on. Like, we made a big mistake, too. We crossed that line and we jumbled so many things. But, yo, this next generation, is, they don't have a boundary. They don't. They're confused with sexuality, with gender, with love, with sex. It, it's all messed up. I'm not saying they're all like that. God God has blessed many kids to be wise in, in those days too. But man, the, the numbers are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And so this coming generation is going to be much colder and much more blunt and much just much more evil in general. So how are you going to fare in those times? I mean... Watching your TV shows and rooting for your favorite sports teams and all these kind of things won't make you strong enough to last those days. Think about Joseph when he said there's going to be seven years of famine or seven years of plenty and then there's going to be seven years of famine. That seven years could be right now. This right now is a time of plenty. It doesn't seem like it. But compared to what's coming, the famine to come, this is, this is the prime time to be reading your Bible to be preaching the gospel, to be growing and edifying others, and to really becoming the person that God wants you to be right now and encourage yourself, right? Otherwise, when that seven years of famine come, you're going to be so broke. You're gonna, your spirit is going to be so broken. And, there, there's, and people around you, you can't feed them, you can't feed yourself. You're going to get taken over by shadow, darkness, right? I don't want you to be living like that. And so this is more of a, a reminder for me as well as you. And I hope that, I, I don't know, if anything, if anything, I hope that I could encourage you, you know, just to walk, walk in obedience to God's laws. We can't keep it perfectly, but if you just keep just a little bit more than you did before the next day, and the next day, and the next day, you'd be so much better off. But remember to keep it all in, in Jesus' hands, you know? If you're heavy laden, if you're burdensome right now, if you're really heavy with all the stresses and worries in your life right now, you got to go to Christ. Look at the cross. Are you worth it? You know, are you worth it? Are you beautiful? Yes, you are. God says you're beautiful. God says you're worthy. It's, the, it's Satan and the devil that say that the complete opposite. God is crazy for you. God wants you to be in his life. He does. And all you got to do is just know that, believe that, and and have the authority that God gave you and, and use it in your life. And so uh, God bless you. I'll talk to you guys next Thursday. And I hope you um, enjoyed this. <laughs>